Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Lee. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the Con um, OAuth 2 plugin, how you can use it to protect your API services. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let me just open my terminal and a browser to my blog post. So this is the blog post. Um, to use this plugin, you need to install Con with a database. In my case, I'm using Postgres as my backend database. Um, Con supports different deployment methods, um, the database one, um, a DBLIS one, and hybrid one. Um, if you're not sure how you how to deploy Con, please leave your comment down below and um, tell me which one you want me to cover. Okay. So um, in our demo, I'm going to use HTTP bin as our backend API services. Now let's get started. So let's just copy, paste here. So first step, we need to create our service um, object and tell con what's the URL to our backend services. Um, if you have multiple targets, you can also use upstream um, objects. But in today's demo, we are just using URL here. And then to access this service, we need to create a route. So I'm creating a demo route here. Now we can access these services at demo, as you can see. And we can um, pass whatever we want to this backend, um, ABC, EFG. Um, yep, you can see here. All right, so now we need to enable the O of two plugin to protect the service. A few things I want to mention. So first, you can see the plugin name we are enabling is O of two, and I'm assigning three scopes to this plugin. Also, I'm making the scope mandatory, so you must provide a scope to use um, to authenticate, and also I'm I'm creating my own provision key here. If you don't want to create your own provision key, you can leave this field as blank. Just don't put it, and Con will generate one for you. Also, Con OAuth 2 plugin supports four different um, authentication grants. I'm enabling all of them um, just for the demonstration purposes. You only need to choose um, whatever suits your needs. Okay. So once we have um, enabled the plugin, we are no longer able to. Um, consume this API. We're getting the 401 because it's expecting us to give a access token. Um, how do we create an access token? First, we need to create a consumer object. So our consumer object's username is of 2 tester and then we will need to create a um, of 2 credentials for this consumer. So this in this example, you can see um, I just put in the name as O of two demo app client ID client secret. I just create the custom ones. If you don't want to use the custom ones, you can leave these two as blank, and Kong will generate that for you. Uh, but one thing to know: if you leave, uh, if you want Kong to generate client secret for you, don't enable the hash secrets because if you do that, you won't be able to know what secret Kong generated. Okay, because it's hashed. Uh, after that, uh, we can start using this grant to get our access token to consume the um, um, API again. The first grant is the authorization call grant, which you need, we need to make two calls. The first call, you will need to know um, the authenticated user. So imagine David is, is requesting to have a authorized code to request for a access token. So you already know who is requesting. Let's copy that. Oh. oh, we can change it to David if we want. Yeah, let me just do that. Oh, another thing I uh, need to mention is um, all these um, API calls, I mean, the authorization calls must be on port 443, um, HTTPS. Um, and so um, because it's a local host, I need to pass in the insecure flag. Uh, but if you're in production, it's um, SSL, you don't need that flag. So let's call David. Okay. After we have submitted our um, authorized request, call will re uh, re response 
with a authorized code and then we can use this code to apply our access token so let's come back here copy the code authorized code delete that put it here now we've got a refresh token and we've got a access token if we access the route again and pass in authorization bearer with our access token we can access our api again right so um, anything we want so you can see here it knows that it is david requesting um, the api and they also have our consumer's name here see um, so this is the first um, flow. The next one is the implicit. Um, I don't think anyone should use it because it's not very secure, but um, I still demonstrate that in case you want it. So it's the same. Um, as you can see, I'm just passing the client ID, provision key, and authenticated username here. And then I, I'm going to get an access token from the redirect URL straight away. Uh, I don't need to make the second call. So if I call demo again with authorization bearer, the new token is working, right? And it knows that it's from authenticated tester. So this is an implicit um, grant. The next one is a client credential. What client credential does is um, it's like a machine to machine. Um, when your uh, software is talking to your con, your API um, gateway, it will um, request for the access token straight away. So because it's automatic, um, it doesn't give you any refresh token. So every time you, your, your software make a call to con, it will request a access token. Pretty simple. Um, the grant type, scope, client ID, client secret, and provision key. You will get a access token straight away. This is the client. Credential. Let me just type it again. Um, uh, it doesn't really matter if you have um, the uppercase or lowercase uh, for the header name. Yep. Okay. So the last one is the password grant. So the password grant is a little bit similar to of authorization call. Uh, when I say it's similar, because you also need to provide a uh, authenticated user ID here with your secret, of course, not like implicit. Implicit, you don't need to give a client secret. So um, you already know who is requesting for this um, access token. You just, you know, skip one step. It will just give you a refresh and access token straight away for the password grant. Um, yeah, once you've got the access token, you can access the API, right? So as you can see, some of the grant, they will give you a refresh token, like the password and authorization code. That's because your access token expires for some time period. And then you can um, use the refresh token to grab a new access token. How do I do that? Refresh token, we just copy here. And we just copy our refresh token here. And paste it here. See, we've got a new refresh token. We've got a new access token. Um, there is another thing I want to mention is for authorization code flow, you can include the PKCE in the float. What it actually does is um, it's, it's the same call. It's, you just need to um, include the code challenge in your first call and the code verifier for the second call. The reason for doing that is they want to make sure whoever make the first call is the same person who is requesting for the access token. Okay, that's what PKCE does. Um, the result is the same. Um, first one, I've got this. Second one, let me just change the call. Um, Um, normally, you will need to use your um, just write your own code to generate the verifier and challenge. If you don't want to do that, um, you can use this link. Uh, 
and to generate your verifier and challenge here. Um, you, it's not very hard to implement, so I would recommend you to um, create your own um, code uh, just for security reasons, right? And the last bit is I have also um, written a PHP application, a very simple one, to um, demo um, the whole thing. And I'm going to show you. So let's just talk around. Uh, I've already got um, this image locally. So if I go to A2, A2. So as you can see here, so for the host name, it's going to be host.docker.internal. And it will be A443. And our day, uh, route path is demo. Um, scroll is email. Client ID is this one. Secret is secret. Provision key is provision key. Authenticate and user ID. I will call it David. Then you should have your access token um, and refresh token here. And you can even refresh it here. Refresh, refresh, refresh. So this is the simple application I made. Um, and hopefully it will help you to understand how this works. Um, and um, yeah, as I said, this is the new attempt to make videos for Corn API Gateway. If you have any topic you want me to cover, please leave me your comment and I will see if I can make a video for that. Thank you for watching and see you next time.